table. That's all there's one table. <laughs> That's how we do it here at Pickles sneaking. House today, bro. Two be, tables. You can't be sneaking <laughs> different two tables on a brother one time. That's all there's one big at that table. I ain't no Hell yeah. <laughs> Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Pickles House, man. I am excited. Two the Two Tables podcast. Welcome to Two Tables. Maybe <laughs> sneaking niggas in with those two tables on niggas. Two tables and a humic pie. That's the good day. <laughs> two tables and a humic pie. <laughs> <laughs> now, what kind of pies do they make? You tell me about this place. Today. Oh, man. it's uh, Right now, they're coming back. They used to make all kinds, bro. They used to make all kinds. Uh, let me introduce you real quick. Okay, okay. This is my uh, real good friend out there from Tennessee, man. And he's been he's been on all kinds of stuff. Comedy Central. He's been on Heart of the City. You can always hear him on Sirius XM, man. This is my big brother, Mo Alexander, everybody. What's up, my man? What's, my, what's popping, brother? All the way from the depths of Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee in the house. Memphis, right Tennessee, the baby. Right up the road from y'all. Yeah. So, yeah, it's the Hubix Pie. They, uh, bro, they, they coming back with lemon and apple. So uh, the apples, I'm not buying lemon. Lemon's never been my thing, but no, I think man, there, there used to be a, there used to be a store in Memphis, Tennessee called Cecil's. Cecil's, the grocery store, and they made these things called a lemon butter pie. I'm still, and they closed, and the they got bought by what uh, Schnooks or some crap like that, and they took everything except the, that damn pie recipe. <laughs> so I'm still on the hunt for that same pie. <laughs> yeah. It's been gone for 15 years. I've yeah. I'm still on the hunt for that same pie. So if he got a lemon pie that might be close to it, I might have to go get it. Oh, dude, pie. you like the lemon? You, you lemon? would probably love it. Yeah. Um, they just uh, they just came back out, literally. It's hard to find them because as soon as they drop, everybody buys them. There's a store in my neighborhood that has them. I'll bring you one tomorrow. Oh, dude, please. I'll don't bring get, you don't one tomorrow. Don't get carjacked trying to be a pie. No, nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm from the hood, bro. They dude, just. Dude, I'm, I'm, <laughs> they from know. The, I'm from the hood, and I'm still. <laughs> down here. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my hotel like, how many cameras y'all got outside? That I think I feel <laughs> when I go get gas. I'm like, fuck, I got to go to this gas station again. Fuck. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> Uh, we almost got killed 17 times trying to get in this, trying to do this podcast. And them just people just turning in front of you. Yeah, man. Care. Y'all need to. Wh- how do you have Corvettes in this town? <laughs> I have seen three Corvettes since I've been in this city this morning. <laughs> three. One was blue. One was red. One was lamb green. About three blocks from here. And I'm like, how are y'all not bottoming out every time you pull out of anything? <laughs> a Corvette. They will, but the Corvette will get you uh, some play down here. You co- yeah, it'll get you played at a, at, a, at a car repair place. That's what it means. <laughs> Play that. They're like, sorry, I done bottom out and tore the whole fiberglass landing off my bottom of my car. Can you please put this back on? <laughs> I'm like, this is ridiculous. I love New Orleans. I have look, I apparently have only been in New Orleans proper. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been in the city. I've been down at the at the Central Garden, the Garden District, in the French Quarter. Yeah. It's my first time hanging out over here, and I'm just like, I'm locking everything. This is yeah. getting the hell out of me. This is like an area where everybody's actually from here. Yeah. You I, know I, what I see mean? that. I get you that. Now, that's the worry part. Y'all yeah. from here. <laughs> Y'all know the sneak snacking place to get out of the way in case. <laughs> It's oh. New Orleans. No, <laughs> no, the closer you get to New Orleans, the more gentrified it done got. Yes, I, I'm at the age now. I need gentrified New Orleans. Cause this, <laughs> I ain't try, this is straight. I'm not, I'm not even trying to steal a land from somebody, but this is straight nigga. Mm, 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 <laughs> this is straight nigga. Mm. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can say that on the podcast. You can. You can. The podcast will be on YouTube. Beep, 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 beep. I Thank think, y'all. Good night. Thank y'all. I think we've done enough time to where that, <laughs> that you can drop an end bomb. And uh, the YouTube has like these these rules where I think. Um, it, you can't curse you do in the first 15 seconds. I know that. 10 minutes or some shit like that. Uh-huh. Uh, and you can't, you can't drop the end bomb. With, I don't think you're supposed to drop the end bomb. Uh, at all but or yeah, something, but you know, not. I'm not too big yet, so they're not. I just can't <laughs> wait to watch this in cap in captions. Nigga, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's com- computer gonna blow up. Where's nigga? I don't know what that means, nigga. <laughs> you can watch Cat Williams, <laughs> bro. <laughs> you ever got to meet Cat? I have. That's one of the few people in this industry I don't know. I don't know Cat at all. But apparently, if you get me drunk or high enough, I can do his voice pretty well. Oh yeah. Yeah, because we were somewhere. I mean, that, so y'all off camera is Shannon. She's one of my partners, and you can't see her, but yeah. she, she, uh, she, we, we was where, where, where was we? We were, we were in Memphis doing a show, and apparently I got so messed up that I was just leaning my head out of the car, going and slipped into Cat Williams' voice, and just she cracking up. I'm like, I don't know, I, can, I didn't know I could do that one. Okay. <laughs> That's good, man. Yeah. <laughs> so 
but now I work on it. And I've been before in the history of Megadome. Have we ever? Oh, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> How long? I don't so even do impersonations on stage. This is just my own personal amusement when I'm at home. This is what I do at home. This is not for stage. It's just me being weird. I like that, man. Yeah, when I'm at home, I do weird stuff, too. It, and it helps. It's almost like you're getting ready for the stage. It's but you do, you're being fun for yourself. I have to amuse myself some way. You know yeah. what I mean? Whatever makes it, my, my brain is weird. I, whatever amuses me, I have to do it then. So. so tell everybody how long you've been doing comedy. Long and most before YouTube was created. That's how long I've been doing comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did comedy original. When I started doing comedy. None of this social media cared. I didn't have any Twitter or any of that. That didn't even exist. That was just yeah. out here, walk, driving, taking buses, planes, trains, every thing to get to a gig just to be funny. That's what it was. Oh wow! Just having to be funny. Now I gotta get. Social media fans to follow me, on, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram. Yeah, I've been look. I was looking at that shit today. I actually followed you today on I TikTok. I saw that because you, that. <laughs> you, you. T- last time you were here, you're like, you got TikTok. I'm like, I don't really. I know. You know, I'm just learning this this kind of thing now. T- I'm just learning. The t- so that's one thing I'm gonna do this year is add on TikTok and see if uh, and take these shorts and stuff mm-hmm. and clips all, off the podcast and just start throwing because I got enough episodes to where I can clip that shit for yep, a year. Yep, that's what you do. You year. Clip it, you clip it up there, put these little things we talk about. I mean, you're going to have to have a history of nigga them clip, and that'll be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so tell me, how you how how did you grow up in Tennessee, man? How was it for you? Well, I mean, what, give me the, give me a, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just uh, I mean, born like, and raised. You're, you're, tell everybody, where you born and raised? Memphis, Tennessee. That's where I'm from. It's the 901, home of Three Six Mafia, a dead Elvis, and... Uh, a bunch of other good barbecue. Who's your favorite rapper at 3-6 Mafia? Rest in peace, Gangsta Boo, but uh, probably Juicy J is just ridiculous. You like Juicy J? Juicy J is ridiculous, man. I love Project Pat. Project Pat is hilarious, though. Project, <laughs> Project Pat was the, was the gangster, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Project Pat, Project though. Project Pat is hilarious. I will give you that. He comes out with that. Yeah, Project Pat is good. The one I never understood was the one named Crunchy Black. I'm like, where did Crunchy <laughs> Black come from? <laughs> Why you sound like a fried chicken skin? Crunchy Black. <laughs> <laughs> he was the blackest he one. Was the, I was like, damn. <laughs> that, wasn't even, that wasn't even his stage name. That was just what he was. I am Crunchy Black. Yeah. Yes, you are, sir. You yes. are Crunchy Black. <laughs> you look like a burnt up chocolate chip cookie. That's what <laughs> Did you have, uh, were you like a single parent household or you had well, your parents? I, well, I was, I was raised pretty much by my mom. I had multiple, uh, my, my life was weird. My grandmother pretty much raised me because my mom was there, but she's a dumbass. Well, was a dumbass. Don't worry about that. Uh, she wasn't a dumbass. She just, me and her never got along. She was a, she was a Can you put that mic a little bit closer? I'm sorry. Let me no, you're good. Hold on, let me hold the table with these two tables. There, there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> didn't even tell her brother there were two tables. I didn't know that. I was <laughs> one solid ass table. I moved the mic, so mm-hmm. the table was falling. No, um, I was raised with grandmother, mother, uh, uh, uncle, gr- <laughs> Apparently, my grandfather, all that. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, that was my fa- that was my main family structure. But I also had like several other parents. You know what I mean? Like took like a village. It took a village because I went to I went to a private black Catholic school. Oh wow! That's where I came up. That's rare to hear. Yeah, that's what I think. Y'all have private <laughs> black Catholic. Father Bertrand <laughs> Elementary. For one, two, those first two are private black school is yep. rare, but private black Catholic yeah, is even. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't technically black, but it wasn't like hey, no white people. But it was just like y'all, y'all can come in. They were like, no, nah, we good, we good. And, uh, <laughs> uh, so that's why I went to school, and uh, you know, all those it was like it was a small place. There may be. 200 students in the whole place. So oh, wow. We all knew each other, and all the parents were good with each other. And mm-hmm. parents would be like, Mo, what you doing? I'm like, I'm playing basketball this week. Okay, we can watch it. All right, come on out and do that. So okay. All the parents would be like, it was just, a, it really li- literally was a village. All the parents knew each other, except for like, like they all knew my grandmother, none of them knew my mom, but all of them knew my grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a uh, you know that's kind of how it is down here. A lot more people, but people know everybody yeah. down here. It's a small New Orleans. We always say it's a small New Orleans. Yeah, no, I got you on that one. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> did you uh, did, did you have like good grades in school? Did you do? Yeah, man, I was the. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge nerd. I don't, I don't have a problem telling that to anybody. I'm a yeah, huge, I'm a huge nerd, and uh, I was like straight A B student most of my life. Nice, nice. Uh, you, may, you know, I, I learned a long time ago. I, I saw the I saw the interview with Saya you did, and uh, she was talking about how class clown. I learned a long time ago, early at an early age, you be a class clown for the kids, you're getting in trouble. 
Yeah. I was a class clown with the teacher. Yeah. I made the teachers laugh. Okay. And they were just like, oh, we love you, Mom. I was like, yeah, I'll be sitting over here. <laughs> See, I was. Well, have you done your homework? I did my homework for the like six weeks. Leave me alone. I'm going to make some funny stuff over here. Let yeah. I used to be a class clown, but the teachers I would mess with were the teachers that, like, messed with us. Yeah. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah. No. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be a class clown for the students, but. Because this teacher is kind of hard on us. Mm -hmm. I, I had a weird, I was really smart. Mm -hmm. So I was an asshole class clown <laughs> to the, like I would mess with the teacher to the point where she couldn't like kick me out the room for mm -hmm. what I was doing, but it would bring her anxiety up. Like I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and no, everybody I saw it, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, we, I just had, I made, I, I was, just, I was, just, I, I'm not even kidding. I was like the big nerd, the big nerd kid because like in sixth grade, this is how old I am, when that, my school first got computers. Yeah. My grandmother found out which one it was, went out, bought that computer. I spent the summer learning that computer because I was okay. a nerd. And I got pulled out of every single class after that because no teacher knew what the hell they were doing. Okay. <laughs> like, Mo, could you come in here and do this? I got you, dog. I'll be there in five minutes. Hold on. Let me get out of my class. Hold That's on. awesome. Then, uh, and I made these teachers laugh all the time. I did that. I, I, I was just the. I was seriously this class clown for the teacher. That's what I did. I was making them laugh all the time. Not Hell even, yeah. Not even the hard ones. It was just like five teachers who were kind of cool. And once they saw, oh, he get his work done and he's stupid. All right, let's do this. Okay. Yeah, you got, you got to get in good with the upper echelon. Yep. Yep. I'm, I, I had those teachers too. I ain't getting I, into attention. I had those teachers where they really liked me too. I had mm -hmm. one teacher who really liked me because I was Italian and mm -hmm. he was Italian. Mm -hmm. You know, the Italian guys, they always try to make it an Italian thing. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was cool with it. You know, yeah, he used yeah. to let me, when I was skipping, he would let me come by his class <laughs> and just hang out. <laughs> just <laughs> walking around the hallways. Just walking, hey, come on in here. Let me get a sandwich. It was good, man. Uh, <laughs> did you go to college? I did for a little while, and then I had burnt out. Seriously, burnt out. Went to yeah. college. I actually, it's people don't understand. I, I, you, you've, seen, you've seen parts of my show and stuff. You've seen mm -hmm. my show two or three times now. These stories I tell are real. I mean, I really did burn out in calculus, uh, calculus two because of physics. I was a physics major in college. Oh, wow. I was a physics major, theater minor. Okay. That, that <laughs> sounds so horrible for me. Just <laughs> think about it, bro. Like, I was a heroin addict in college. <laughs> oh, my God. And <laughs> I started doing college level math. I was like, fuck this shit. This is, <laughs> this is not happening, bro. I was a physics major until I got the calculus too, and then I hated everything. I'm like, I cannot know. Mm -mm. I love. I, I'm a I'm a math nerd. You tell me I do math jokes and this thing. Just yeah. Mess with folks. But uh, that class, I was like, nope, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. I'm done. Get me out of here. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. It comes down to that too. I, like, I can't like, do it. It just hurts my. I, I'm like, I mean, it literally. You know how hard it is to fail a class two times and get a lower grade the second time. Oof. Get yeah. a lower grade the second time. That's for real. That's not a joke. That, that would, was real. That would hurt my. Feelings. I'm like, how did I get a D the first time and a D minus the second time? I did. <laughs> I thought I did better. What is going on? Get me out of this class. This See, really I was. My, I I was too smart for my own good in mm -hmm. school, bro. I really was. Oh, yeah. In college, I had a 3.8 GPA, but in like school, school, like for my my computer class, uh, for example, I wouldn't do too much, mm -hmm. and I would make a deal with the teacher. I'd be like, "Hey, if I pass the exam with an A or a B, will you pass me?" And <laughs> they would be like, "Yes," to get rid of me, dude. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, they would get rid of <laughs> That is hilarious. And I would make the B or the A. Like, that is hilarious. So they would have to give me my passing grade, you know? What computer class were you doing, baby? Miss Williams. Shout out to Miss Williams. Shout out Miss Williams. <laughs> <laughs> she was uh, she always had a good like spirit to her, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She I'd make her laugh too. That was one of the teachers I'd yeah. make her laugh. Yeah. Uh, but she knew I was like a mischief kind of oh, yeah. child. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I got to high school. It just got more and more ridiculous because I found more people like me. Mm -hmm. And, like, my entire French class used to terrorize my French teacher. And You got to do French? Yeah, man. That's I took, awesome. I took French for seven years. Nice. Four in, four in uh, high school, three in college. And I, I quit f I, <laughs> I quit after uh, my third year in college because my French teacher in college was Brazilian. Oh, wow. And you trying to do French with a Brazilian accent. I was like, we have no clue what you just said, dude. Oh, really? He said, basically, for like three weeks. And we were like, why is he talking <laughs> about bicycles? What the hell is he doing? <laughs> what? I'm like, I got to go. No, I'm done. I'm done. I was always mad because from going to middle school to um, high school here, French was an elective that I tried to pick. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, they were like, we don't have a French teacher anymore. Oh. 
So I, that automatically set me off as like, all right, I don't really like, I don't want to, I should have listened to the Spanish class. Mm. Spanish teacher hated me. She did not like me, bro. I would skip that class. And even when I tried, she was like, I hate you, bro. <laughs> she, Damn. Even when I tried, she was like, just go to to the office, dude. I was like, all right. Uh, <laughs> this Spanish ain't for wow. me. Wow. <laughs> I learned Malta. That's what I learned. There's what? Malta. That's oh. weed. Oh, okay. You know? I'm like, what are you saying to me, dude? I'm like, <laughs> No, man, my French t- my I took French all four years in high school, and I joined the best time of my life in high school was we joined up joined the French club, oh, and yeah. all we did was party. Yeah, That's all we when we had parties, I mean we had party party. We had a party. We'd all go to jail right now yeah. if this was back when I went to high school. Nice, because we had a party at my at my French teacher's house. For Christmas. Oh, wow. For a Christmas party. Yeah, that's and illegal, probably. <laughs> Bro, yeah, there was some illegal shit going down in that room, that, that, that house. I'm going to tell you we that. We had some illegal shit going on in mine, too. I'll tell you about it in a second. Yeah, well, uh, we, we, <laughs> we sold it as what we did was we had a party at our house, but we were going to go caroling the neighborhood singing French Christmas songs. Okay. That and sounds we, fun, actually. Dude, it was fun. I'm not going to lie to you. It was fun. But it also got cold, so we did maybe 10 houses, like, Everybody back to the house. And we went to the house, and I'm like a sophomore at that time. All the seniors have brought hot chocolate that have been spiked with everything. Oh, wow. Everything. And then I'm not giving our teacher, I'm not even going to say what she did. But anyway, I'm just going to tell you right now, we were all tore up on the way home. I mean, we had seniors driving us back to the house, and they're like, you okay? No. <laughs> yeah, teachers sucking off kids, <laughs> bro. <It was. laughs> <laughs> we had one, bro. We had like a 70-year-old teacher. She had the longest nails. in the. She was literally in the Guinness Book of World Records for her nails being the longest in the okay, world. Okay, that's at just one creepy point. right there. That's weird. Dude, and she would suck on pickles in the class like, like they were a dick. It was fucking wild, bro. It was... <laughs> It was wild. Damn. And look, I tell a story. I'm not going to tell it on here, but I tell it because it's stage thing. Yeah, yeah. But I tell a story about her. Um, and I did it at House of Blues one night. Mm-hmm. And the DJ popped up and he, like, said her name. He was like, you talking about Miss, you know? And I was like, yeah, actually I am, bro. He was like, that lady sucked my friend's dick. I was like, <laughs> I was like, see, I can't make this up, crowd. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> But we used to, man, you know what I'm <laughs> kids today do not understand how much y'all have been repressed because of other people who came before you fucking stuff up. Yeah. Because you don't understand, we, okay, this was, okay, I'm old, I'm way older than you guys, so it's like, I don't even want to tell you my age, but we were, uh, they had, this is when they first came out with uh, battery-operated water guns. Okay, that's cool. It's cool as hell. And this was before school shooting, so you know how long ago this was. Mm-hmm. And we would bring water guns to school and shoot people with water guns. Oh, and wow. my French teacher got mad one day and stole both of, took both of my water guns. And she's like, give me those. You mother. And I'm just like, all right, take them. I don't care. Take these things. And she's like, I'll be right back, you bitches. And she, <laughs> she, she said that to us. And then just went all like sneaky uh, Mission Impossible. She was like, do, 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 do. And left the room. <laughs> And then we hear somebody scream three doors down, and she comes back and throws both water guns at me because she has gone into the home economics room and shot the teacher in the face with water guns. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, <laughs> did you shoot the teacher with a water gun? That's why she took it from you? No, no, I did not. I just had them. <laughs> I just had them because we was about to be lunch, and I'm like, I'm going to go to get some people. And she's like, no, give me these. <laughs> <laughs> and just shot another teacher and threw the guns that back at me. Like I'm y'all like, had some fun times. We had a ball. We used to we we used to change the we used to change our French room up all the time because she would come in like five minutes late and we'd have everything changed. Like the one time we had the seats all put on the back, so we were all sitting on the floor. Our backs were on the floor and the little the little desk was pointing to the ceiling. Oh wow! And one time we did that time we completely changed the entire room. Like she was in the front. The, the, this one time we put the room in the back where she's in the back and the rest of the students are in the front. She's like, I might like this. No, <laughs> no, you ain't keeping this like this. <laughs> the next day she walked in and she was like, all right, what y'all didn't did? Nothing? What's wrong? And we, and we, what we did was we put we took everything off her desk and flipped her desk around. Okay. So when she sat down, she slammed her knees into the wall part of her oh, desk. Oh, wow. Because she's like, I don't see anything wrong. I don't trust none of y'all. What do we do? What, why do you trust us? We good people. <laughs> And we put all the stuff right back like the way she was. And she's like, all right, okay, let's open your books. Bam! Ah, you motherfucker! <laughs> 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 oh, 
That is like the old school kind of like that. Is really is those old yeah, school kind of trips. Like, That's Christmas story type yeah, stuff. You is, know, no, just, you understand my school, my Memphis Catholic High is where I went to school. Memphis okay. Catholic High, and we, my class was one of the dumbest, not the dumbest, in, <laughs> not one of the dumbest in uh, you know mentally. We just did wrong stuff. Yeah. So we had nuns, okay? We had a couple nuns still in the building. Okay. And this one chick, she was like 102 then, and I found out <laughs> she's still alive now. I'm like, how old is she? Yeah. Because she looked like uh, Yoda then. And uh, one day, okay, this is how bad my class was. They made up a student. Oh, wow. What they you mean? They made up a student. How can you make up a student? for? The, and the teacher, like, believed People would turn in his homework. <laughs> People would. I, no, they didn't, I, bro. I, 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 no, I'm he was done. on the roll. Yes, <laughs> yes. And every other teacher knew. That, <laughs> every other teacher knew about this, and they're like, "Y'all wrong for that." Well, you go ahead and tell her. No, I'm not telling her. So, but it, where was the student every day? In every class? day he would have a. He'd get he, uh, he, every student. Every, okay, what happened was she'd call a roll. Somebody would say his name, and when she'd look for him, they're like, "Oh, he, you just gave him a pass to go to the office." Uh, oh, okay, I forgot about that because she <laughs> was gone. She really? was gone. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And this went on for four years. Wow. Four years. I I, I wish I you had, had the my, same teacher. Well, this, this, or there was this one class, this one class, this one nun taught this one thing, and we always had her for something. Okay, I get but it. She was old. And old she, yeah. she was, she was <laughs> Y'all fucking with the elder. Dude, she was a hundred and something then, and she's still alive now. She is praying for death. Jesus don't even want to deal with her. <laughs> and she was... <laughs> it's real. She's seen it. She's seen it. This, <laughs> My senior year, I mean, everybody knew this was this student was not there. His his name was Benjamin Michael Turpin the third. Oh wow! They, I, they <laughs> wow, that's a fucking name too. That's a name. That's a real. That's Benjamin that was Michael, Michael Turpin, Turpin the third. <laughs> you put the third on that bitch and everything. <laughs> dude, you don't know how messed up my class was, dog. <laughs> in, in the senior year, but there's a picture of the football game, right? The, mm -hmm. the football has. Been popped out by somebody, and you see the picture of the guy running behind the ball, and the ball just floating in midair, and the and the and the uh, and it says Benjamin Michael Turpin runs for the down. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. That's <laughs> and there's pictures like that throughout the whole yearbook of just something messed up and just like wow. Benjamin type Michael Turpin hits the catch of the brick, you know. <laughs> Shoots a brick, and I'm just like stupid. Wow, for real! For like, real. I want to see pictures of this. You got will, the yearbook? I'm not with me, but I, I do have the yearbook. You send me some pictures. I'm gonna send some pictures. It's 100 real. He even has, <laughs> he's even in the senior picture thing, and it's just the, it's a picture of the boat. You know, somebody dressed up as a bow tie, mm -hmm. and just a Cheshire cat smile. That's all it is. That's all it is. And he's got a picture. <laughs> Dude, this went on for four years. Four years. That's we awesome. Did that. that is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that's the greatest student ever, this, you, this, Let me tell you how senile this nun was. This, this, this how, well, okay. She was the one who signed me in my fresh, my first day of senior year, okay? Okay. I was a cheerleader and a, and a mascot for that school my senior year. You were a cheerleader and a mascot. I was a cheerleader. I got everything. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll, I'll throw you in a basket toss right now. Blah, blah, Hell blah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the first football game, which was like a week later, she comes up to me. I'm in uniform. She comes up, oh, it's so great to see you, Mo. Where are you going to college now? I'm like, um, um, hello? <laughs> I'm in a horse costume. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so did you do anything pertaining to the stage in school was, or I college? Was, yeah, I was... <laughs> Just like here's the thing, just like Sia, I was a speech and debate person okay. in high school, and we did theater too. So yeah, I did that. Nice. My theater, my theater, uh, my theater director hated me, hated me, because you gotta understand, I'm insane. You know I'm insane. Yeah. My senior year in high school, I would get to school at five o'clock in the morning, and stay there to probably ten o'clock at night. Yeah. Because I was a wrestler, I was a cheerleader. I was in the band, oh, damn. and I had theater things. That's what I was doing. So I get there at 5 o'clock in the morning, run the bleachers. What would you play in a band? A uh, trumpet. Okay. Did that for a while. So um, 
I was burnt out. And one night, I could not remember. <laughs> I hate to tell this story because it makes me look like I'm an asshole and I'm violent. But I'm not violent. I'm not. I'm very peaceful. Not violent. We do comedy. I do comedy. I'm not violent. I'm vi- I, use my vi- I use my comedy as my violence. <laughs> but one night, I, was, I had been there since 5 o'clock in the morning. I probably only slept like, you know, two hours of that week. And uh, I couldn't remember my words to the, the play. And he said something to me. And you ever seen Star Wars? Have you ever seen yeah. Star Wars when Darth Vader picks that dude up by the neck? Yeah. I did that to my teacher. <laughs> wow. I did that to my teacher. And I put him down immediately and it just went home. And the next day I came back and I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Don't don't get me. And no one calling the cops or any of that stuff. But he was just like, how can we get Mo off the plane without him killing everybody? Yeah. <laughs> If I give him a sandwich, will he not hurt me? Because <laughs> I was a wrestler at that time, and I'm just like, you know, we don't eat. We don't. Yeah. You know, we just like we cutting weight. I'm, pee, you know, and all that stuff. And I had to apologize. And ugh, yeah, I was, I was insane. Well, at least you didn't get in trouble, man. I didn't, get, didn't. I didn't get in any trouble. Nobody. There was no police, and this is all pre all that stuff. This is just they're just like we gotta get him off the play. He might <laughs> kill everybody. I tried to fight a teacher once. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was in. Uh, it was. In, I think it was like a history class or something, mm-hmm. and. There was this girl sitting in front of me, and I was like, I was mess, I was massaging her shoulders, mm-hmm. all right. And mm-hmm. the teacher was cock blocking me. He was like, "Hey," <laughs> <laughs> he was, like, he was like, "Hey, isn't that so and so's girlfriend?" And I was like, "Stop cock blocking, bro. You want to fight?" And he was like, <laughs> "Oh my god, you keep, <laughs> you keep playing with me, bro. You want to fight?" And he was like, "Yeah." And I would get up, I got up, and I walked out the door, like, "Come out into the hallway, let's fight." And he shut the door or locked the door, and I was like, I, <laughs> "He wouldn't." Coming to the hallway, oh, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> so I sat there and I would knock on the door until he let me back in. He let me back in that bitch eventually, though. Oh my god. I, I, I did not ever fight. That was the. Cl- I mean, I didn't even want to do that. I was just. I was so bright. It was just a. And we used to mess with him anyway because he looked just like Norman Bates. Oh wow, yeah. He looked, and we used to call him creepy. Nor- he did. He, we used to call him Norman all the time because you know I'm an <laughs> asshole. I'm like Norman, would you get me a glass of water, Norman? And he's like, yes, mother. I'm you like, ever? <laughs> <laughs> you ever watch Bates Motel? Yeah, I I did not. I did not watch that. It was like on like three seasons. I did not watch. I that. watched like uh, I watched the first season for sure. Yeah, that's why. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I picture I picture that guy. I, <laughs> I, I, whatever you picture, it's him. It's yeah. Him. <laughs> Stringy little white dude, big ass glasses. That's him. Pale. It, 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 it was it was exactly him. I was like Norman. <laughs> and I used to do that to him. I was like Norman. Is it okay if I go be? <laughs> <laughs> man, <laughs> have you uh? You've done a lot of stuff in comedy, man. What's your? Do, do you like try to go do TV more? I am trying to get on everything I possibly can. That's not a lie. If there is no show. If there is, I will. There is not a TV show that I will not do right now. I'm I'm trying to get on everything. Cause, yeah. Uh, just because I have been doing this way too long, and I am I'm still enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. I still love what I do. Yeah. I will. I will. I will never stop to, doing comedy. I don't care whatever I do. I will always do comedy at some point. But I, I'm just trying to get more exposure right now. Definitely. Because uh, I mean, all my it's like it's all me and my friends. Me and my friends have all. I mean, uh, me and Roy Wood started together right, right around the time. So okay. Actually, he, I started before Roy, but me and Roy met up at uh, Star Search back in 2000. That's when I first met Roy. Okay. And uh, me and him both made to the final little thing. And I thought I was getting a call, and the manager was like, the, ma- the producer was like, hey, we had to bump you and get this other person on, but I'm going to get you on something else. I promise. I promise to get you on something else. And, you know, still here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, have you had the pleasure of doing any, any TV things no, that you like? I did the Kevin Hart thing. That was fun. That was cool. Yeah, that dude, was, I used to watch that show. Yeah. That was a, I used to, uh, I used to love watching that that Kevin Hart late night show, Heart of the City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a BET show, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. man, I, late night BET was the shit. Back oh no, then, no, not, yeah. not 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 the late night. You're the different show. That's a different show. I know what you're, you're talking about. Heart to Heart. Oh, that's what that was that's called. That's what the hard to heart, the hard to heart, the late night thing. Which doing. one's hard of the city? Hard of the city was the show. It's basically uh, he goes to a different city and finds four or five standups, and that's what that is. Okay. So they did one in New Orleans. They did one in Memphis. They did one in Jackson. They did one in L.A., New York. Uh, I think Milwaukee. They did a bunch of them. They yeah, I think they. Uh, they, I think. Uh, you know, three seasons worth. Who they get out of New Orleans? Shawty, I think. Yes. Yeah, Shawty is funny, dude. Yeah. I, I actually opened for him at uh, Interference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
Interference is a cool little club in Mandeville. Mm. Mandeville, yeah. So yeah, shout out Corey Mack, bro. Shout out Corey Mack. I had <laughs> him dying last night. He was not. He was not ready. <laughs> yeah, dude. Corey's hilarious. He's yeah. him. Um, he's one of the dudes I looked at when I was coming up uh, before the pandemic. He used mm-hmm. to run this room that I run now, mm-hmm. and it's like a special little room, dog. It really like helps you develop who you are as a comic. Okay. You know, and that's how like, dude. He he used to run shit in New Orleans. Like he would be. Whenever, before the pandemic, people, you know, there's always chatterings in the scene, mm-hmm. and Corey was, like, the one they would chatter about, like, he's the only one making money in the scene, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, because he was hustling so much. Yeah, yeah. You know, Corey's, Corey's a beast. Hustler. And whenever the pandemic happened, he was, like, I started doing comedy again. I was the first one to start doing shows, producing shows, me and Jorge Velasquez. Mm-hmm. And uh, Corey Mack was, he, like, left New Orleans and went to Florida, but he was, like, doing shows yeah he was doing show shows he was selling tickets and shit and he like took what he did here and brought it out to florida and did some great things like so i'm just like steadily watching Corey the whole time you know what i mean and and striving for kind of like what he was going for you know um because i mean there's only certain people i look up to and uh, i mean you know mentor to me in this scene you know uh but i love everybody yeah but there's certain motherfuckers that just do this shit. Yeah. You know, like yeah. just certain motherfuckers like Red Bean, fucking uh Mark Caesar. There's a there's a bunch of like you you seen. Um I and I recently started breaching out reaching like branching out to like Lafayette and uh the North Shore and stuff like that. Dude, they got some savage comics. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I love Lafayette. I love Lafayette. Yeah, we got some good talent down here. Yeah, man. Y'all do. I, I, I like coming down here. Y'all y'all are fun people. When we're trying to get it out there, you know what I mean? Like our comics deserve to I feel like sell tickets on the road too. Yeah. You yeah. know, so we're all trying to figure out that thing of how to like you said, get more exposure and shit. That's why I'm gonna try the TikTok thing. Yeah, yeah man, I'm doing the Instagram, TikTok, I'm doing everything right now. You uh, YouTube, I'm trying to put, because I've learned you can repurpose this. Everybody's not on the same thing, so you can repurpose the same clip three times for three different things. Yeah. And put that out there and see what you, you know, let other people see it. I want everybody to see what I do. Yeah, Cause most I, definitely, because you're hilarious, man. I appreciate that. You hit the stage, and it's it's awesome, man. I love, <laughs> I have a blast. Not only, like, there's, you know, there's this, I've worked with a few different headliners, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's, um, for somebody, you could tell their experience level whenever they're just like playful, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, but experienced as well. And I've only come across that between like you, Ben Roy was another one. Ben Roy, I love that. You, one. I love shout that out man. to Ben Roy. What's happening, homie? Ben Roy, homie? my man. How you been, dog? Where you been? Talk to, talk to me. Huh? He's still out there doing his thing, bro. I love Ben Roy. That man is crazy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, there's certain level of comics when they come in. I could just tell at who they are and who they have grown into as a person. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just it's just a different level, bro. Yeah. And I love learning from that. Yeah, no, I get you know, it. I get it. Hey. And I love watching new people, I mean, people I haven't seen before. That's why I always like to throw some other people on my show. It's like, go ahead and throw somebody on the show. If you, t- if you tell me they're good, let's get, well, watch them. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, you Vince, got. I'm glad you said Vince going to hopefully come through it's tonight. It's not, not Vince, it's the only guy. Tony, Vince might come. I don't know. Maybe they both come. I don't care. I don't have no problem. One night, I know you said he got the show Friday Fridays. Night. I told Vince to come on through, and this other guy named Tony, I cannot remember his last name. Okay. Italian dude, funny as hell. He made, I was like, you stupid. Yeah. And Vince is so stupid. I'm just like, we got to hang out. Yeah. We Vince is great, out. bro. Yeah. I, and I want to see who this Tony guy is. You know, man, Tony, Tony I, I don't remember his last I name. I hope he pops I, up. I hope he does, too, because he was stupid last night. I was like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, man, I'm excited to go do the show with you yeah, these man. next three days, bro. Next three days, let's go to uh, Airby or how you say the name of this place. We at Airby. Wait, it, that's, uh, um, so when I found out online, like Facebook, I was like, oh, that's they, they still, it's the uh, Zeitgeist Theater, mm-hmm. you know, but on Facebook, if you look at my post, it says the Valiant uh, Theater and Lounge, but it's the same building, apparently. Oh. It's just no one's ever switched it over on Facebook. You know how you get like yeah. the buildings change and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, this must be old as hell. When it I was, has to be. I was trying to tag it and stuff. I was like, that's the only. It's because I made sure it was the same address. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's, but I like the building. Okay. I you know, you, I think it's gonna be uh, a good spot for shows. And I, let me tell you about. Let me tell you real quick. Let me, let me interrupt you. Sorry. No, you good. I, it's so interesting and and good to see comedy prospering down here in New Orleans. 
Yeah, it is. Because I had been here in the 90s, and there was no comedy here. There was, yeah. there, there was, there was comedy on a, uh, on a riverboat casino comedy. Okay. And that was it. And that, I was so mad because no one told me that bo- boat took off. <laughs> well, you went to uh, Treasure Chest or Boomtown? I think it might have been Boomtown. Yeah, Boomtown. Nobody, <laughs> nobody told me that some of it took off. That's the West Bank right there. I know what I'm sitting there like, all right, can I get my check and go? It's like, uh, you can't leave yet. What do you mean I can't leave? I'm, I'm trying to leave. Oh, the boat dock schedule to go back for like two hours. You mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They stopped doing it. Um, every once in a while now, I think they got to like go off the barge for like an hour or something like that. I was just so mad because I was like, no one told me this boat moved. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, bro. Like uh, I'm trapped on a boat with people. <laughs> casinos do that shit like bonkers, dude. They told me whenever I was there, they were like, "This is a bar. You're actually yep. on the river." Yep. I was yep. like, "No shit." Yeah, but you're landlocked. You're not going anywhere. Right. Like you're not. You're not. It. It. You can't even see the water. You can feel the. Yeah, it's like the side of a Mississippi, yeah. but it's patchy. Yeah. They. What they've done is they they carved out a little uh, a little a little uh, a river thing and then blocked it off so it can't go anywhere. Uh huh. And uh, one. Let me tell you this stupid story. One night we were. Uh, this was. This is 1999. It's Keenan Avery Wayans and myself doing the Biloxi version. Okay. Of the place was going to be called the Grand Casino. Okay. And it was it was on the river in Biloxi. I mean on the on the on the Gulf of Mi- on, on Biloxi, and you it the, it was such a windy rainy day you could feel the place moving back and oh, wow. forth. And I'm going past his dressing room, going about to go on stage. It's like, hey man, I hope this boat don't break free. Our people already had one free boat where we don't need another. And he just threw something at me. He's like, "You stupid! Get away from me right now!" <laughs> and that was the first words out my mouth when I walked on stage. Oh, and yeah. blew a room up for 1,200 people or nice. something. He's just like, I can't believe you said that. Yeah, you can. You know what you're dealing with. Don't play, sir. <laughs> Don't play. I tried to get Keenan Avery Williams' mama to adopt me once. Oh, really? Yeah. I've been trying to get audience members' mamas to adopt me. Ah, that's hilarious. Sometimes. Sometimes. Mostly black. Really? Because, you know, black black mamas can cook. Right. Uh, I'm trying to come to your house. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to go to... <laughs> I, was, I love black rooms. So I go up there. I'm like, let's... I'm trying to get invited. Thank Thanksgiving this year, yeah. one of y'all going, somebody going to take me in. I, I believe for the Lord for this to happen. <laughs> got to have fun with them, bro. You got to have fun, man. You got to. You got, <laughs> well, you want to do some uh, plugging? What you got coming up this year? Oh, man, I am everywhere this year. We are try- Right now I'm in the process of trying to write a new hour because, you know, the album came out, Mo Possum Blues. Mo Possum Blues. Go watch it, you guys. Go, go watch the video. We, it's, it's actually the, the, the special on Vimeo, and then that one's uh, the actual album is available on iTunes and all that place. It debuted and stayed at number one for like a week on iTunes. Nice. And I'm like, yay. Because a lot of people get debuted at number one and five minutes later. It's number 74. Yeah. I was like there for a week. I'm like, oh, this is hot right now. I'm hot. Yeah. Uh, so we write a new hour. We're trying to write a new hour, and uh, like, okay, so for people out there in uh, who watching this and gonna be near Birmingham, February eighth and 9th, I'm at the Stardome, the Stardome in Birmingham, nice. me, Hoover, Alabama, six hundred seat amphitheater. Whew. It's a wonderful place. I'm doing that's the win- awesome. It's a great room. I'm doing a Wednesday, Thursday there. Then Miss Pat coming in Friday and Saturday. So uh, to 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 mess with Miss Pat. Y'all gonna I mean, be, I'm gonna be known as Mr. Mo that entire two days. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it on. Mr. Mo is here now, Mr. Mo. <laughs> Wait for Miss Pat. She'll be here Friday, Saturday. Mr. Mo is here right now. Let's do oh, this. Yeah. That's coming up then. And um, I'm just everywhere, man. Just I don't even know. Go check out my web. Look, I need everybody who watches this. Yes, follow me on YouTube. It's Mo Alexander. Follow yeah. me on Instagram, M O Alexander. TikTok, Mo Alexander Comedy. Just follow me all these places because I'm putting up a lot of clips. Okay. Some of the new clips. A lot of people put all they do is put crowd work up there. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't want to put my crowd work up there. And people are like you shouldn't put your act up there. I'm only putting like bits of my act because every joke is multi, multi level. I'm well, not putting the whole joke up there. You know, people don't want to burn their material. That's right, why they that's do the crowd work. No, I understand it, but I'm not. Bur- I might burn one part of a joke, but I'm not gonna burn the whole joke. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the first little hint of funny. You're gonna have to come see me in person to get the full dose of that funny. Right. Because that, like my Cosby, my opening Cosby thing. Okay. You know, there's only. I put that. I only put the first line of that up. They're just like, "You going to jail?" I'm yeah. like, "I don't care. Let's go. Let's go." <laughs> you, you. Uh, I can't wait to Bill Cosby come out on the road next year this year and finds that bit and 
I'm gonna call. Yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> I've honestly made a joke about that, Knox, because you put a post out there. You're like, what is he gonna call this? This. <laughs> And dude, I was I found myself in some rooms and I started because I talk about Kyle's being a yeah. joke. Yeah. And I started like doing it. I was like, what is he gonna call this? And I, I spit out like five different things, mm-hmm. bro. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize I had that in me. Yep. Uh, and it worked. Yeah. I know it, I don't doubt that, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll call it the one shot tour. The one the shot one minimum. Shot. <laughs> one drink minimum tour. The one drink minimum tour. Is, <laughs> mine was the doctor is loose. <laughs> the doctor. <laughs> 2023 Bill Cosby, the Quaaludes I still have to her. <laughs> I got the Quaaludes. P I L L S. That is great. He has Quaaludes. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> you good? My gosh, bro. Oh my god, it's so silly. I love it. What is uh so do you when you plan out you are you planned your 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 stuff out for the rest of the year so far? You mean uh, how you do mean? you how do you like plan out your year? Like booking or stuff? Yeah. Like do I book I look, I have I've already had my New Year's Eve gig booked. But then I have For this year? For this year. Damn. Yeah. Is that because you have uh, uh, or is that because do you do your own footwork? Most of the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have to be out there doing this all because, um, you know, I don't have any management. I don't have anybody backing me except. No, I didn't know that. No, I'm, I do everything on my own. I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm like Eddie Griffith. I do this all on my own. That's know. awesome. Yeah, that's all I was wondering, bro. It's good to have somebody I can, because I'm doing it basically on my own and figuring it out too, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and I'm to that point where, like, I got to get a tax ID number and shit. And start paying taxes and figure that whole thing out. Yeah. And it's a little depressing. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. It's a little depressing because, you know, I'm just out here doing comedy and having a good time. And once something turns into that, that fucking, that, that business, it's like, oh, man, did that just take a little bit from me, from the fun, you know? Like, it does. It does. It's like <laughs> it, it honestly does. Because, look, this is why I've always fought the whole TikTok and Instagram thing. It's like, look. I, I got in this business to write jokes, walk on stage, be funny, go back to the hotel room, and be left alone. Yeah. Now I got to make 17 videos a day. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I still so understand the tax. It becomes a whole different animal for you. Guys. Yeah. It's like this is a business we're in. Yeah. And I, I love what I do. I love stand-up comedy. But, and, but you know, I really need somebody to be like, like, okay, just give me all this stuff and I'll take it off your hand. But then, you know, suddenly you, you know, suddenly – like Dane Cook brother stole all his shit, so you can't really trust anybody. Really? Yeah, you know. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Dane Cook woke up one morning like I think my brother stole my money and he stole really his money. Yes. How you mean stole it out of the bank yeah. account? Was he his Dane accountant? Cook, Dane Cook, uh, Dane's brother was his uh, business uh, his business manager and stole everything. Wow, that's fucked yeah. up. Yeah. Did he get it back? Damn. That's crazy. I grew up on Dane Cook, man, and he was one of the like comics. Whenever I remember when he did that in the round, the that uh, that special in yeah, the yeah, round, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, that yeah. shit. That's when I was I was like I think high school then, yeah. like ninth grade area, and I was I watched that thing like seven times, mm-hmm. bro. He was a fucking savage, mm-hmm. you know. And was it after that? that yeah, this he, was after that. This was after that. After he's made the hundreds of millions of dollars that he did. <laughs> Yeah, this is this had to happen what 2014 or something I think 2015. Oh wow, that's not that long ago. Yeah, this wasn't too long ago. I just saw him talk about it on another thing. It was like, yeah, I woke up when I just woke up and said, I think my brother stole all my money. And he, he had to get it back some kind of oh, way. No, you can't get back spent money. <laughs> oh, he spent it. <laughs> yes. Oh. It wasn't like he just had. I oh, got your money. No, he, he had spent that. He had bought cars and other. How to stuff. beat my brother up? Uh, his brother's in jail. I think I don't want to beat my him. brother. Before I, you go to jail, we go. To, I'm, we throw it hands, yeah. bitch. <laughs> I fuck my brother. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind you see. But that's why you gotta take care. Of. You gotta find people you can trust. And even your, even your brother. I mean, you gotta find somebody you can trust. No, you are right, bro. Trust is uh, a hard thing mm-hmm. nowadays. Yeah. I'm trusting people. It's. Uh, because it, you're basically putting your shit in somebody else's hands. Yeah, so I got to take care of all my own stuff right now. I'm doing it all myself. I mean, Chandra here does a lot of the stuff. She does the, a lot of the back-end stuff that I yeah. do. You know, she's like, 
send out the press cat, press kits and stuff. And stuff I'm stuff. trying to fucking get my girlfriend in on some shit, and she's you know she's young, bro. So she's she supports me, but she still got the baby and stuff like that. Right. So she's not there with it. Yeah, you know? I understand. Let her do your thing. Let her do your thing. So I mean, like I'm just doing it by myself, right? It's uh, but I think it's gonna be more fulfilling in in the end. You'll learn more. Yeah, I don't have to like lean on nobody, you know. Definitely, bro. Yeah. Um, so you never had a manager? No shit. Yeah, I've been doing this solo for How do you get on shows and stuff like that? I call people and say, hey, here's my EPK. Let me talk to you. Yeah? I was like, let's, uh, it, most of the time I don't have a problem. Most of the time I'm like, I'll post something like, I need to go somewhere. And somebody, I'll get like 10 responses like, hey, Mo, can you, is this date open? Sure, I can do that. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of calling involved. I mean, I make a lot of calls and emails. Because, uh, yes, half the country knows who I am comedy club-wise. Yeah. Then there's a whole other half who don't. Right. And I'm fighting for I'm fighting for every gig I can get because, you know, there's celebrities got to come in. They got their favorite people. So I got to weasel my mm-hmm. way through their favorite people to show them, like, you need to kick one of your favorites off and let me begin with new favorites. Come on. Yeah. And that's what I do. I go into a place and. Uh, I got to tell you, I got to give a shout out to Wendy, Princess CEO of the Comedy Works up in Denver. Shout out to a Comedy shout Works. Shout out to Comedy Works in Denver. Shout out to Ashley, who put me on, because I haven't come out to that town for maybe five or six years, just doing spots and hanging out, and just uh, one of the new managers that came up to me, who the fuck are you? And I'm like, I am Mo. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> I am the Mo. And she's like, how, how, why don't I know you? I don't know. And she was like, and just t- gave me the card. She's like, call her now. I'm like, I'm not calling her now. What are you doing? Leave me alone. I'm like, yeah. no, you, you, you're not calling. It's one o'clock in the morning. Leave me alone. I'm not calling her. <laughs> one in the morning. It's one in the morning. Right? I'm not calling her now. So anyway. But yeah, no, but Wendy trying to help me move up in the game a little bit too. I'm not, I shouldn't probably say that. So erase that. Just don't even say that name. But she, uh, I'm trying to move up. You block name. that? Block that name. Don't, yeah, don't, go ahead. The first one, you can keep that one. Just block it. Uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Wendy Curtis. We love her. Shout out, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I want to come out to Comedy Works. Man, Shout club, out to you. That club <laughs> is ridiculous. I need to go out there because, like I said, I know Ben. You know what I mean? I know mm-hmm. Ben Roy. I, can, oh. I got some other connections from people who you live do, out there. Dude, let me tell you right now. I have spent a month in Denver every July for the past four years. Okay. And I get on every show I possibly can. Okay. And there's like, there's really, I'm doing comedy out there like six nights a week. Nice. For a month. How long did it take you to develop into, like, a professional comic? Uh, are you talking about a professional comic or who I am now? Who you are now. Oh, How about that? So, I tell every comic who asks me something like this. There's a moment you find in your early comedy career. I call it a fuck you moment. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's when you've been on the road for maybe, you know, maybe six weeks straight. You're doing some shitty show in the middle of nowhere. You got 13 rednecks and whatever just looking at you. Mm-hmm. And you just say, fuck it. And you just, you, you transform from a person who's doing an act to being yourself, who you've always been. Mm-hmm. But you can translate your everyday funny to the stage. Yeah. And it took me a while to do It took me probably about seven years to do that. Okay. But that still wasn't who I was, who I am now. It's, it's been a trend. It's just been, it progresses. It progresses after your first fuck you moment. Yeah. Uh, there's a comic I really shouldn't name. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've yeah. had a few of those. Yeah, but there's one that you, there's one going to come that's going to change everything. Yeah. It changes your entire perspective on the game. It just changes you internally. It it it's your armor has finally built itself onto you. Okay. And there's nothing that can go wrong. I don't care how bad that night is, you're not gonna care. Right. And it's not that you don't care about the act the show. It's just like I'm bulletproof. I don't care if you personally got offended by that joke, man. Yeah. Eat my butt. Okay. <laughs> 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 I am here to make people laugh, and I'm yeah. I don't do that, you know. Uh, there's a comic who I shouldn't name, Quack Quack, 
one time came up to me uh, five years in, and we were at the, we were at the Addison Improv, and he came up to me and was like, "How long it take? How long you been doing comedy?" Oh, uh, five years. I'm like, oh, it takes five years to learn how to write a joke. Let me show you how to do this. And mm. that was a little bit too arrogant for me. Yeah. And I just went up and was like, "Okay, show me what you can do," and I proceeded to get a standing ovation in front of him. Oof. And then he uh, couldn't do anything. It took him 20 mm. minutes to catch that crowd back. Yeah. And afterwards, he was like, I, I didn't expect you to be funny. I know you did. You <laughs> do now, don't you? <laughs> right. <laughs> you do now. Yeah. I actually had one of those more, uh, those kind of moments with, <coughs> bless you, uh, with Corey Mack. He, uh, <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he was like, I, I went and did Dustin, and he was like, dude, you're – you're fucking just like a funny person now. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like I'm trying to be humble about it. He was like, no, you need to tell people that shit. <laughs> I was like, yeah. he's like, because there's supposed to be a flow to the show where it builds up, mm-hmm. you know. And you just destroy somebody. I just <laughs> he you was just like, they were they were rough trying to follow you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, you know. That's one of the nicest feeling when you just destroy a show. <laughs> it is a good feeling, it is a good but feeling. It's like, oh, um, it right. really is. Everybody should be able to. I mean, never. There's, there's a lot of people won't, but yeah. that is something. I was thinking about that last night. I was like, man, having the gift of laughter, it's one of the greatest things that God's ever given me. Mm-hmm. Once I realized that, and like you said, like, I, I'm to like in the middle of that. Fuck it. Point, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm to like, I know what you're talking about, but I'm not fully. I'm like in transition to that oh, shit. I'm well, four I'm, years in, you know. Oh, don't even worry and about it. Go, I'm not right now. You go. You gonna look back in ten years and be like, what the hell was I thinking four years ago? This Probably. was ten years ago. <laughs> this is what I, I didn't know shit then. I was like, yeah. thank God, Mo Alexander told me what I did not know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a different feeling now. But it's like you, you know, you, when you start out, you're all nervous and stuff. And even though I have a theater background and all this stuff, yeah. but I can break into Shakespeare when I fucking want to sometimes. And I do that on stage just to weird people out. You just, it, it's just no longer, there's no fear anymore. It's just like, I'm going on this stage. There's nothing that could happen that's just going to freak me out. Yeah. I'm going to have fun. You know, somebody's going to run up on stage. I'm going to kick them off the stage if I have to. Fuck yeah. That's what we're going to do tonight, brother. Boy, I, dude, dude that's people, what people are crazy now. They're like, I ain't not give a joke. I'm going to tell you right in your face. I'm going to kill your whole family. Leave me alone. Right. <laughs> Keep working with me. Keep going. Go ahead and mess with me again. See what happens. See what happens. <laughs> oh, man, thank you for coming in today, bro. Hey, thank that's, you for having me here. That's our time. I know we got to go. We got to go fucking uh, do our show tonight, yeah, baby. Yeah, go scare some people. Tonight. Next three nights at the Zygites, we're going to scare white people. We're going to scare all people, all <laughs> races. We're going to bring, we're gonna bring what Martin Luther King did. We wanted, can I buy a Martin Luther King cake? Is that a thing? Oh, Martin shit. Luther King cake? Oh, shit. Instead That's of good. a baby, all you get is hope. Um. <laughs> 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 I had a dream this cake I had a baby. I had a dream this baby was delicious. <laughs> Thank you, brother, so Thank much, you, man. man. I love you, and we're going to have some fun, baby, the Thank next you. three days, Let's man. Have some fun, baby. Thanks for having me, Dad. And if y'all came out to any of these shows at Zygites, uh when you watch this, thank y'all for coming out and supporting the shows. Man, Mo's going to be back in town after this probably later in the year, hopefully. 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 hopefully you I'm know. not coming to this area of the town again. I'm like, y'all, y'all don't know how to drive. <laughs> Uh, it's dude. It's uh, everywhere around from from three o'clock to like seven o'clock. You should have told me why I said five it's o'clock. That's a bad idea. <laughs> you said three, and I was like, I don't know if I'll be up by three. You could have said just do it on Thursday when we'll be there. No, come five o'clock. That's a good time, Mo. We almost got killed seventeen. Times. There is a stray rooster just walking down the street by yes. himself. It probably by yeah. himself. Yeah, it's New Orleans, bro. She's like, I hear. Her. So she's like, we, we drive no. Somebody got a rooster, and she just said, "Oh no, they're the roosters." Oh, he got himself. I said, "You know, you in the hood, hood. When the roosters come out <laughs> and crow." <laughs> uh, Thank y'all for tuning Thank in you. the Pickles House, man. Peace out. Appreciate you, brother.